Faith and I would like to wish you all a happy and uplifting Thanksgiving. We wish we were there to be with you in person, but I guess we've got Zoom instead. Many of us have a special meal prepared for sometime this weekend, not just to avoid getting hungry, but for the purpose of getting together, celebrating with people we want around us. And in this year, our Thanksgiving celebration happens in a particular context of the world in turmoil. Our gospel reading today fits well with a weekend that includes a meal for celebration. As you heard, the gospel story, the parable that Jesus told, is something with many levels of meaning, a wedding feast. All the invited guests decide not to show up to forget their invitation. And on one level, we're given a gritty critique of the religious political establishment of the time when Jesus walked the earth. It's also a message for us about how we respond in our relationship with God. I'd like you to do a bit of imagination first. Imagine that you are hosting a banquet. You decide you're going to have a special celebration. So you book um, a, a good restaurant in downtown Victoria. You send out invitations. You remind everybody everything's paid for. It's a nice free meal. They all say, yes, we'll be there. And then within the hour, just before the food's going to go on the table, they all cancel either send you a text or a phone message. Ridiculous reasons for canceling, like, sorry, man, can't make it. I've got to take the dog for grooming. And I think if I was in your position as host, I'd be hurt, I'd feel rejected. Eventually, I'd get pretty darn angry. And then you have an inspired moment. You tip all the waiters handsomely and say, hey, Go out and invite everybody in off the street so you can bring in here. Let's fill this place up and have a good meal anyway. And they bring in visitors to Victoria, people on their lunch break, a few students, some homeless people, and even a parking meter attendant. And everybody gets settled down. They start to enjoy the meal. And you have an amazing experience. So do your surprise guests. It's a day that will change you and a day you remember forever. Now for another walk into imagination. Let's imagine that you're on vacation with a couple of friends and you're doing the tourist tour of London and right now you're outside Buckingham Palace and you're enjoying watching the changing of the guard. And when things are just about finished and you're about ready to leave and go on to something else, you notice there's several footmen coming out from the palace in royal livery and they hand out invitations to everybody, you included, to come and have dinner with the queen that evening. About 40 or 50 people and you get polite instructions of course on what to wear, a dress for women and a, a jacket and tie for the men and it's for tonight at 7 p.m. You've got two hours to get ready. What do you do? Right now, you're probably thinking, oh no, another of David's nutcase fantasies. All the people invited to a feast at the royal palace? You've got to be kidding. I think we resist seeing ourselves being invited without earning a seat at the table. Did you hear the parable? I hope you struggle with it for several weeks because it's talking about you and me. It's a lot easier to imagine oneself arranging a dinner at a restaurant, impulsively inviting anyone to join you, replacing the folk you originally invited who were no-shows. You rescue a disaster, you get to play generous host, and you have a unique event to remember. You're the hero, but neither you nor I are the host in the parable. Perhaps you also remember the parable of the Good Samaritan. We like to see ourselves as taking the part of the Samaritan or perhaps the innkeeper. Um, you know, the people who rescue and help the victim survive. In reality, Jesus tells a story so we can see ourselves in the man who was left half dead at the roadside. It's Jesus who has the role of Samaritan. Again, 
You and I are the ones in today's parable who were invited off the street. We're the respondents. In today's parable, we also heard it conclude with a really stark punchline. Many are called, but few are chosen. Some people meet, misread this to mean that Jesus has started an exclusive club, chosen club, members only. Well, those people need to have new glasses. Let's just reflect on the concept of chosen for a minute. Two weeks ago, um, there was an Episcopal election. There were seven candidates, probably asked by friends or colleagues or their parishioners to let their names stand, and they did. They all responded to the invitation. One person was elected, Anna Greenwood Lee. She wasn't chosen until she accepted and agreed to be the chosen one. To be chosen involves a response to the invitation. And in the parable, the initial invitees to a wedding banquet could not be chosen because they refused to respond to the invitation. In a few moments, those of you who are physically in the building of St. Philip Church will be able to respond when you hear Christopher invite you to exchange the peace. If you respond to this invitation, if you agree to be chosen, you and your neighbor exchange the peace. What a wonderful invitation to the opportunity to give someone the gift of the peace of Christ, peace that this troubled world certainly cannot give. It's also uplifting to be chosen through your own agreement to receive this peace from the other person. It's a heartwarming exchange. And then a few minutes after that, in the Eucharistic feast, we exchange the sacrament with Jesus, who is the host. And if we respond to the invitation, we come forward. He gives us abundant life and spiritual nourishment when we choose to receive him in the bread. In exchange, we give him love and gratitude and trust. Jesus chooses to be in this exchange. We agree to be chosen. It's a life-making, life-changing exchange. Our Christian faith, the way we live in family, the way we function in friendships, all have deep themes of choosing to invite, choosing to respond, and being chosen into intimacy. And today, celebrating Thanksgiving Day, we focus on the aspects of life we cherish, those we hold lovingly in our hearts, faith, and family and friends. I hope the food we eat is going to be delicious, for the food is really just a door opener to invite us in to exchange love and fellowship with people we cherish. Sharing food is the door opener to when we look over our lives, we look over the months since this time last year, and give thanks to God for the way we are being blessed, even now in the face of this pandemic. It is a time when we exchange thanks for people we care about, and this is life-making. Perhaps you've noticed that when people live with stress, it's not unusual for them to sort of close down, to withdraw from social contacts. It's amazing how a gentle, how are you keeping these days? How are you doing? Just checking in to see how you are. It's amazing how much that can help someone feel less isolated. So I ask you, what now takes the place of meeting friends for a double-double and a no-calorie donut at Timmy's? Perhaps a care package placed on a friend's doorstep. Thrifty, Amazon, Save On Foods can make a delivery for you. Perhaps have the care package delivered anonymously. Perhaps you recall about a month ago, Shannon gave a beautiful talk to the children about love your neighbor. And we saw her making cookies and then delivering them to friends. And everybody was excited and happy to be together. What some of you don't know is that the very time that video was being shown during the Sunday service, the local baker in our community 
came to our door with a, uh, a plate of cookies that somebody had paid the baker to make and bring to us. We still don't know who it was, but the coincidence, the coincidence of those two things blew me away and we're still in the glow of the kindness and we still wonder who it was. That was beautiful. If this can be done in Mexico, um, you sure can do it in Victoria. Well, the parable we listen to is also about our relationship with God through Jesus. We've been invited into the way of life that he lived. We've been chosen through accepting the invitation to follow the way of this way of life. So I ask you now to reflect on how are you nurturing your way of faith despite distractions in the world? Which of your faith enriching practices are you finding helpful? Which keep you well grounded? And are you aware of needing something more in your faith life? I want to suggest that you be kind to yourself and honor and take care of these needs. And this Thanksgiving, I pray that all of us will nurture our relationship with family, with friends, and with God. And may we live as people who lovingly respond to all of God's invitations, including the invitation to be kind to other people. A moment for prayer. I sought my God, my God I could not see. I sought my soul, my soul eluded me. I sought my friends, and I found all three. Amen.